Tabletop Tuesday. Welcome back, old people. So glad to see you all here. Woo -woo 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 -woo. Unexpected level of energy. Unexpected. Wow. It's, uh, I like to start off strong. You're here for it. Really want to build up. I want to start with that peak and then just <laughs> let it casually drizzle down as the energy goes, oh, here we go. As we get the thoughtful conversation okay. about the things that we're going to cover today. Okay. How has your week been? How are you doing? It's been a pretty decent week so far. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And you? That's good. Uh, I am fine. It's been cold and mm. wet. And okay. that's what you expect in the winter in the Pacific Northwest. So I think uh, the best answer is that it's been very satisfactory. Good. Good. It did yeah. drizzle a bit. Uh, my patio was moist this morning when I woke up. <laughs> uh, I there, there is no evidence uh, other than that. That, okay. that there was that there was rain overnight, but it is what it is. Well, very good. Such as California. Well, and the southern half of it, at least. The... <laughs> southern half in the greater Los Angeles metropolitan area. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't dox me. Oh. <laughs> there are only what forty million people in that that amount of space so i think you're probably safe but just to make sure let's awkwardly transition into our weekly progress no games so dan you had a real recovery week last week you really came back you got some uh, things done you yeah recovered from your injury got some paint <laughs> on figures yeah um how did we do this week how did yeah. our progress go did well, you accomplish the goal, just to remind everybody, so I don't have to put a flashback in, uh -huh. of completing at least one final test model? One test model, right, to, to, to see if I understand how to paint a Grey Knight miniature. Uh, I, th I think the answer is yes, although as I look at... Are you ready for a slideshow? I'm ready for a slideshow! Okay. <laughs> Do you see that? Oh, yeah. Okay. So this looks a lot better to my eyes when I'm not looking at it in a close-up photograph. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, this looks pretty good. And then I took photos of it for this. And I was like, oh, my God, it looks terrible. There's so many, so much that needs to still be done. There's obviously a lot of cleanup needed. There's quite a bit of uh, the like the on the chest. There's that wording on the chest that's supposed to have a black background with mm. with gold dry brushing over it, but that clearly didn't pick up as well as I th thought it would. There's a lot of shading and highlighting really that needs to be done still mm. on the model, but the 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 idea is there. Yeah, um, yeah. I think you're being too hard on yourself. So, uh, well, that's that's nice of you. All right. So uh, this is Voldred Storm, by the way. He is mm -hmm. the uh, he was my favorite interceptor in the my Chaos Gate Demon Hunters playthrough. So I have now I have a 3D version of him now with a power sword. Nice. So here he is from the side. I like that book. I there's. Is there a technique to doing print in very, very tiny letters? <laughs> there are I, a couple uh, different ways to do that. A lot of folks will... There's the very thin down black paint that you then use with a very small brush and you just kind of jiggle, 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 jiggle. Uh-huh. Um, I use like a Micron pen or a black panel lining pen. Uh, the one that I have is from... Uh, Gundam. It's a Gundam paint marker, and it's a black liner pen. Okay. And uh, I'll put that down in the doobly doo, so y'all can look at it. It's super okay. cheap. It's like less than two bucks. Oh. Uh, and uh, I used to have a Rapidograph pen, which are these very expensive uh, architectural pens that refill with ink and everything. And and I just kept breaking the nibs, and so I tried replacing the nibs for a while. I spent a lot of money on hmm. very tiny pens and it turns out that Gundam panel liner pens do the exact same thing for like a tenth of the cost okay. so that might be something to consider uh, I also Did... do really tiny brushes with black ink 
Okay. Well, that's what this is. This okay. is a fine detail brush with black ink, but it still uh, didn't do what I wanted it to do. Mm. I think it looks like Eldrick symbols. So, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's none of this, none of that's written in English. So, you know, who knows what, what it is in those holy texts of theirs. Totally. So here's the reverse end. I obviously need to do a lot of... Oh, wow. That's cool looking. Uh, I need to do some cleanup here of... I don't even really know what this is. This looked like a power source to me, though, mm-hmm. that, that then has wiring that going up to the, the aerials for the, the teleporter. And so I thought, well, okay, I'll just make all of these that kind of that blue color. But I need to... I want, I want to make this a little prettier and Mm. do some highlighting on it so i obviously take i'm going to take like a darker blue down here on the bottom and then a lighter blue up here to look like a like a lens highlight you might actually want to reverse that and do the light on the bottom dark on the top and then a little dollop a little point of white at the top i think that's what i meant to say Mm. i got you though Mm. yeah i think the blue uh the blue tone that you talked about on the under armor pieces turned out really good Mm. like the back of the knees yeah okay good yeah down down here it it needs some cleanup but um the the idea is there Mm. and i want to get i want to get some more into these like crevices here that are on like the backs of his his uh sabatons i guess these are (laughs) Uh, and then here obviously i missed that this joint here, but, mm. uh, but that's, that's where I'm headed with it. I'm still trying to figure out the best way to do, how do I want to shade the armor? My, I, I'm of two minds of this one, the gray Knights are very proud and mm-hmm. unless they are in combat, physical combat on a dirty battlefield, I feel like their armor would be pristine. They probably spend a lot of time in religious meditation and contemplation cleaning their armor, Mm -hmm. making it as pristine as possible because they are a representative of the emperor in the face of chaos. Mm -hmm. So they Mm -hmm. want to gleam as much as possible. That's my first thought. My second thought is these guys, when we're playing a game with them, they are on the dirty battlefield. And so do I dirty them up? Or is this, wow, they've just teleported in and here here they are. So do I make the backpack look dirty and oily? and Or do I do silver highlights everywhere and make it look gleaming? Mm. That's, that's the, uh, the choice I have to make now as I start completing the other nine guys who are out of focus in the background here because they're not complete. (laughs) And final side is his, his right side. This is going to be where his name, this is why I was asking about writing with, Mm. with, because obviously I tried to, Oh, I lost my mouse. The, I tried to, to write storm with a fine detail brush and, Oh, it did not. It did not work, so I need to figure out if where I can get one of those pens that you were talking about, because I think that might work a little bit better. I have heard that Micron pens, which you can get at any grocery store, are also really solid. Micron pens at a yeah. grocery store. Okay. Well, they, no, there's like the little tiny school supply section, so I'm... Yeah. Like, that's where they are? They're called Micron. They're tan. And they're, they okay. have very, very, very sharp little, like, 0. 0.3, 0. 0.5 millimeter nibs. Yeah, what is this? I think this is a 0. 0.3. Okay. All right. Uh, Another thing I oh, noticed when I, was, I really when I was looking at this, uh, it's really visible here, is that the silver or the... I used gunmetal paint for the armor. Mm-hmm. And it looks really flaky. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering if that's just, is that just the way it looks or has something gone wrong here? <laughs> uh, it doesn't look like that when you're just looking at the model. It looks like shining metal, but look, looking close up, it, lo- it doesn't look right, I guess, is my, is my thought. Well, all metallics are just paint with metal flecks in it, right? Sure. 
So, and, and different, uh, different companies have different luck with different, with their different metallics. So I don't know, maybe, maybe that's a reflection of old army painter metallics. Um, hmm. I don't know. Well, I don't know. Anyhow, that is my first test model that needs some cleanup, but otherwise that's, that's the gist of it. Well, he looks really good, dude. That's so. great. That's great. Well, that's really exciting. The Justicars will be interesting because their their shoulder pads have a lot of that writing that you see on the on on the Sabaton here. Mm-hmm. That's the entirety of their shoulder pads. It's mm. just text. So that'll be interesting to see how that comes out if I'm able to to make that pop. So, well, that is. That is it. That is my slideshow. Well, that was that was a very uh, very nice first slideshow for yourself. How'd you feel about that? <laughs> again, alarmed at how bad things look close up. <laughs> so I will not be doing that again. <laughs> no, we have to. It looks so good. It looks so good. Uh, I will. How I will you? begin. How did you do? Uh, I uh, again completed my progress. Um, so double double air horns this week. Uh, I also made some real moves on my stretch goals. Nice. So we can see the start here of, nice. uh, of Thrice Cursed. But he's not the feature today. Oh, oh okay. He's, right. He is bonus. He is extra. Uh, right. Let me begin my slideshow. Here we go. Oh. Blue in the face. <laughs> Bloated and gross. Yeah, the like Screamer it. Screamer Hulk is, is here. Okay, there's there's a little bit of um a little bit of Dragon Ball Z <laughs> little Goku here. <laughs> little, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Thank you. Yeah, no, that looks he's really uh, good, man. The mouths, see, all the screaming, the gibbering out. mouths, they all look fantastic. He is he's known as the butcher, so he's got a big old cleaver. He's got hands and feet hanging off the front. He's got a tongue yeah. and several other pieces. Of mm-hmm. someone hanging off a a leather <laughs> strap made of human skin, okay, uh, and uh, you know extra heads growing out of his arms. Lots of things going on here. Yeah. So here's the side. You could see that uh, uh, I really wanted him to look bloated and a little bit bruised. So the shadows mm-hmm. are really shadowed, and then the upper ridges are really upper ridged and all of the veins i like the vein effect of using this carrienburg crimson shade over over them uh but on this i kind of try to turn it up so that it'd be just that much more impactful and then on the back here he's got more meat hooks similar to uh the uh the octopus cthulhu face the drowned yeah, yeah. but he's also got this giant kidney hanging off the back and it's difficult to tell but i made that it looks wet it yes that is the plan yes it is it is got the uh blood for the blood god technical paint on it over Uh i painted it as an organ so it already has like light purples and pinks and things in it but then you put the blood on it and it looks like it was just freshly taken out yeah it really does so that's good that's good that that was the plan i'm glad i'm glad that's coming across uh, and then here we've got some closer looks at that side mouth opening up. Again, more Nurgle's Rot. Just mm-hmm. really, really getting the full effect of, of that paint in here. Mm-hmm. I and, love uh, how the, the the if you go back to the previous, mm-hmm. the, the head that's growing out of his right shoulder isn't completely formed yet. So the bottom part of the jaw is still part of the shoulder. But you Did can you tell... notice the coloration though? It's starting to turn like the inside. <laughs> I added just a little bit of of that that interior red mm. to kind of make it look like oh, it's growing out. Yes, it does so look like motion. it does look like he is uh, he is struggling to push out, like as though being born. It's a very dramatic story already for Screamer Hulk. <laughs> And then there's a close up on his face. Hey, hey, last week we talked about crunch versus fluff. This is we what did. we're fluffing this is right fluff. now. This is so fluff. <laughs> so fluff. Speaking of fluff, look at that hair. Yes. Um, but yes. uh 
but yeah, the you'll notice that the face actually, the face skin looked exactly like all of the rest of his skin. So it was really toned down and it was kind of, it, it was kind of getting lost in the rest of the body. Mm. And I wanted that main head to stand out just a little bit more. It's the only one that's not screaming. So mm -hmm. I went back and I did some, uh, some touch-ups to it, but his body is a collection of shades and staining and really thin paint glazes, okay. which I couldn't duplicate with regular paint. So when I did his face, all of a sudden he looked like he was in kabuki makeup because the colors oh. I tried to use to, to fix it or to match it were just way too opaque and way too solid. So what I had to do was basically reshade the entire face. It still stands out a little bit, which is what I was hoping for, but now it at least looks like the rest of the body as opposed to just being a complete, uh, uh, <laughs> wearing like a face full of makeup. Right. It, yeah. it is subtle enough that the face pops out from the rest of the body. It's recognizable as a head, uh, but it's not so different in color that it is uh, distracting. Good. It looks good, very good, natural. Good. It looks it looks like there's just uh, a, maybe a brighter light that happens <laughs> happens to be on his face and not on the rest of his body yet. He's got he's got a uh, he's got a spotlight. He's got a spotlight right on that one yeah. non screaming face. The well, only I'm, think, one. I'm thinking he's like walking underneath a a, a lumo globe <laughs> in a dark a dark passage of a hive city and and just that light just happens to be like just right over his face at the moment. And some, some poor hive city worker is down there in the guts of the, of the city. And he turns around and sees this guy lumbering at him. That's the first, that's his first image is that, that head. Nice. Okay. Well, I, uh, that, that is my head cannon. That works for me. <laughs> uh, and then here's a close up on, on his uh, stomach screamers and, uh, those look and fantastic. The those look fantastic, especially the one with the long tongue where you can tell it is it is a pink tongue, but it's got the the green bile on it. And it, it like the kidney in the back, it looks wet. So it, it really looks, picked up the shine from you the did, ring light. Yeah, you did a great job. <laughs> it really picked up the shine. <laughs> it looks great. Uh, and then there's a close up on the, uh, on, Spe you know, it, it almost, speaking of the kidney. It looks like almost like a fetus, it, and so like oh. there was part of me that was like, "Is I had to really look at it because I was yeah. like, that's a body part, right? Like they didn't. It's Games Workshop isn't that transgressive, <laughs> like." <laughs> but there was a part of me that was like, "Oh my god, Whoa. if I if I was just a little bit more, mm -hmm. I don't I don't even know what to say. Like mm -hmm. just a little sicker in the head. Yeah, I could I could put little eyes on that and it'd be well, a thing. But it's definitely yeah. a kidney." <laughs> It's definitely a kidney. <laughs> oh, well, you did a great job. You did a Thank great you. job. I, I, I think I said last week I find your painting both inspirational and intimidating because I'm so far behind. And especially after looking at my guy today, I'm like, oh, there's so much work that needs to be done still. Even though I thought, oh, it looks pretty. He's almost tabletop ready after I base him. Nah. <laughs> Nah. I think you're being Not to too my hard standard. on yourself. Not okay. to my standard. That's fair. That's <laughs> fair. Uh, actually, Dan, it turns out that you said that to me uh, on our Instagram page. And if you would like to say things to us, you can also do that on our Instagram account, which is at no games for old men, as you can see down below here. <laughs> Link in the doobly doo. <laughs> well, Dan, that's our weekly progress. So now is the time for our next segment, and one of the ones that is apparently the most insightful of uh, of all of our segments. Uh, other okay. tabletop things. No games for old so due to illness and due to travel logistics, we've had to postpone what was expected to be a December game, at least as far as we know at this mm. point. So today's topic, a hot button issue, something I want to take a little bit of a different angle on. 
is how do you manage your hobby time time management? H hobby time, hobby time time management. Yes. Manage hobby time time management. A lot of people like to talk about how do you adjust to burnout. How do you how do you uh, how do you tackle that pile of shame or pile of opportunity, depending on where you land in the glass half full, half empty yeah. uh, debate? Yeah. Um, but there there are plenty of times when you're not burnt out, but it's still hard to manage your time. And rather than, you know, going for that extreme, what about the the everyday hobbyist who's just like, you know, I've I've got a spare hour. It'd be great to get started on something, but dear Lord, what do I do? So, um, Dan, what, what is, what is your solution to hobby time, time management? It's very challenging for me. I, I have been making a real effort this week and last week since last episode, I will say during the past week to put aside some time to paint almost every day and that really helped me get storm to the point of completion that he is now but it's been a struggle i i find painting i, I like doing it but it's difficult for me especially now because my eyes are starting to fade i think i need i need glasses clearly because i go i go blurried blurry eyed mm -hmm. when i am painting and i can only you know paint an hour or so before i just can't see details anymore and uh last night when i was i was painting i'm painting i'm painting and i'm like i wonder what time it is and i i look up and i've got a clock off to my to my right on the oven and i look over at it i couldn't read it your and eyes have I've, refocused yeah. i've always had really good vision up until a year ago mm. and my eyes are just failing me now so mm. t so painting is a reminder that i can't see <laughs> I've got good middle distance, mm. but things that are really far away and things that are right up close, I, I can't see it anymore. So, so, so are you painting like this? Yes. Are you really? Yes. Oh God, that's a great that's a great distance. If we were to uh, set up like actual videos of uh, people <laughs> painting, like that's a good distance to have. Is it really? Cause have, yeah, because you can have I the guess, camera in between. Because the camera gets in there, and yeah. you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, it's uh, oh, so that on top of just the other general struggles of trying to make time to paint when you know i've got we're, we're running a, we're trying to do a youtube channel here so there's two game series minimum that minimum. are going that i'm playing and then editing and uploading, just trying to get all of that work work done on top of something else that I'll discuss in our next segment. <laughs> and I, I, you know, the, I don't feel like I've got a good solution yet. Mm. Mm. Yesterday I did get a lot of painting done because I, I was home alone and I put in some earbuds and I put on an audio book and I started painting. And before I knew it, two hours had gone by. So that mm. was good. Mm. And I'm wondering if maybe that's just my solution. Do I just need to do that podcast or something like that just to keep my brain busy? Mm -hmm. Because if I'm just painting, I'll, I'll my mind wanders. And I start thinking of, oh, I need to do this or this needs to get done or stuff. Dude, it's funny that you mentioned that because the idea of deep work has been in the zeitgeist and, and it's been even in the communication. Yeah. That's the audiobook I was listening to while I was painting yesterday. There you go. There you go. So, yeah. So, like that concept deep work by of Cal, Cal Newport. Yeah. And we will have a link to that in the doobly doo as well. <laughs> but uh, the idea of just setting the time aside, ignoring interruptions. And, mm -hmm. and just digging into it and going. Um, 
so I totally get that. That's that's how I have to be too. If I don't feel like I've got a certain like my brain will pick an amount of time that it decides it needs to be able to work on something. Yes. I'm not one of those painters that can sit down for 15 minutes, do maybe like a leg and then be done for a while, go do something else, come back and do it. Mm. I feel this isn't just for painting though. For me in general, I kind of just need to, once I start something, I need to sit down and do it and complete it, or at least make some good strong moves and whatever it is before i'll let myself get up and do something else you want to see significant progress yeah yeah, yeah. understandable yeah otherwise um, you don't you, you don't feel like you did anything do you because one of the issues that i have when i'm managing my tongue my hobby time management is uh <laughs> i made up the hashtag phrase managing hashtag hobby time manage time management. hobby time time management <laughs> Um, that's not even going to fit in the section we have to go. Uh, is that I think of being able to spend that hobby time almost like a reward. So yeah. I'll have to, I'll have to complete everything else that I even imagine I have to do that day before I'll let myself sit down and do it. Okay. Yeah. That and works. So, that works. That's a great way to look at it. I don't know because, because there are some times when I'll purpose, like I'll get in my own way and there will be something that I have no control over, but I'm waiting for a response or I need uh, clarification on something or like uh, right now I'm working on pitches for three different shows and I need art. Like I'm, I'm on some of those I'm waiting for art and there's nothing else I could do. So I could call it done, but I don't because I'm like, oh, should I just make the layouts then and just put the art in later? Like my brain will try and find mm -hmm. something else to try and be productive. I'm using air quotes only because like whether I do it now or whether I do it when the art actually comes in, it's I don't know how much time I'm saving. <laughs> but it does keep yeah. me from doing something else that I want to do. Um because I'm I'm worried about whether or not I'm being productive. Do you ever have something like that? Oh, constantly. That mm. yes, hundred percent, all the time. And that's why I was thinking that if you set aside your hobby time and you claim it as your earned leisure time, mm. then when you're doing it, you shouldn't be feeling guilty about doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, but I, get I understand that. Yeah. you feeling like you've got. You've got a project, a work project that you've got as far as it can go without needing other people's input. And now you're waiting for that input. You can't do – what are you going to do? You can't go farther with that. So you, you've you got to decide that that task is complete to your level of ability and influence – up to that point and now you've earned your leisure time i mean sure i get that logically oh uh, yeah <laughs> but, but up in here up in here it is a completely different game it turns out being a zennial and having been in gig culture for the last uh what decade uh uh or i guess five years five years where i've actually not had some kind of like I've been in some kind of startup or something right. for the last half a decade. Yeah. Um, well, that it turns out that that really rewires your brain. It does. And, yeah. It, it does. It really changes. When you are working for yourself or when you are working at a a startup like you've been doing, a couple. A couple. <laughs> then you feel a hyper sense of responsibility for what happens at that business so you feel like there isn't really a time when you aren't working whether totally. you're physically completing a task or whether you are thinking about the next task that needs to be completed and strategizing your path to completion for that task that's work too yeah and that is very difficult to train your brain 
to uh, to deal with that kind of mindset to allow yourself leisure time so <laughs> unfortunately what it sounds to to me like is you, you need uh, to read deep work by cal newport because that'll sure solve your problems <laughs> i know right right <laughs> hey it's seven hours on audible i listened to it in three sessions three painting sessions I just that. happen to have a free credit right now. Just We're not sponsored by Audible yet. Just do it. Uh, or, I imagine or Cal Newport. I don't think that could be that could be one of our things. Hey, Cal, give us a call. Give us a call, Cal. We're ready. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I don't know that we have great answers out of this. So I turn to you, faithful mm. old people. Um, how do you manage your hobby time time management when you're dealing with your projects? <laughs> what are your solutions? What gets you going? Uh, is it one of those things that you do with your kids to help bond with them, but also get some things done? Is it one of those things that your you and your partner are are into this together, and and maybe that's a thing you share? Uh, is it that you have abandoned all of the responsibilities because you really want to get that Astra Militarum army done? Yeah, uh, because that Codex is coming, and, and you you're are, like you are sitting in a puddle of your own filth yeah, for seventy two hours just trying to paint. Just, just you and you and Miniac trying to do yep. a forty-eight hour <laughs> army completion. <laughs> Tell us you know down. What? You just hit on something. It hmm. is is pairing activities. Hmm. Whether it's whether it's something that you do with your partner or a friend, because now you're spending quality time, but yeah. also accomplishing whatever goals you have for the hobby, or. Uh, Doing something like I was doing, although I didn't even hit on the fact that I was doing two things at once, but painting while also listening to an audiobook or a podcast or something. Maybe oh, you yeah. Put, maybe you put a favorite movie on. I um, will I will do all of the above. And... Um, I will tend to listen to, and it will depend on what I'm doing too. Like uh, lately, I have been listening to the Forge the Narrative podcast and also this little podcast. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um uh, the hero's journey, um, two guys. Oh, I like uh, those guys. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're yeah. pretty, they're pretty great. Uh, I listened to them. Uh, Shameless link, plug. Link of the doobly doo. Shameless plug. Hey, yeah. Uh, we just recorded our episode on elf. So that'll be, that'll be ready at the end of December, to, uh, just, just after Christmas. So uh, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, like but then also I watch the extended version of aliens whenever Ooh. I paint, uh, oh, yeah. whenever I paint Imperial guard. Yes. I just pop or Starship that. Troopers. Those are those mm -hmm. are the two IG movies. Totally. <laughs> totally. And uh, but anyway, let us know down in the comments because now now we're just now we're just talking. But uh let us know how you manage your doing. hobby time time management. That's what we're doing here. We're talking. And that's other tabletop things. <laughs> you know, I'm starting to wonder if maybe I need to mix up like Instead of playing the bumpers at the front and the back of each section, if maybe maybe it needs something else after each one. Like such as I don't know. I don't know. Just a different just a yeah, different, different music, bumper. A different music cue or something. Maybe. Maybe because then something when a little we go, quicker. You're gonna close other tabletop things and go into stuff we're hyped about and it's the yeah. same music. 10 seconds apart. So now I thought that was really now audience. You funny? can tell us. I thought it was funny. <laughs> I thought it was funny <laughs> that it was just constantly like this. At, no games for old man. It's like, it's like if you, if you were in Southern California at all between 1991 and 2007, and it was like, uh, sports <laughs> Take it to the limit. <laughs> oh my so, god! So eventually, that is, would... that is exactly what it is. It's yeah. sports chalet. <laughs> oh, you brilliant bastard! That's amazing. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's coming across that way. I don't know. Let us know. Well, are it is you, now. Now that you now are... that you've exposed your thought process, now everybody's going to hear sports chalet now. That's how that's how I'm gonna end this one. She's and gonna Jeff's be... gonna be like, God damn it, now I gotta rewrite the song because right. now it now it's sports LA. Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> but, he likes but with that, music. <laughs> here's what we're hyped about. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
Okay. <laughs> Get it together. Get it together. Right. Let's bring it home. All right. So, two second. I just, I just snotted because I laughed so hard. <laughs> Dan, are, are you a uh, uh, a faithful subscriber to the Disney Plus? Yes. Excellent. Yes. Um, you're aware that the Plus has been releasing nostalgic content uh for the last several years indeed yes um are you aware that they have dipped deep into the lucasfilm archives and revived one of the greatest um (laughs) bad movies of the 80s howard the duck no 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 it's actually willow the legacy sequel, Willow. Bad movies. And this I week, love Willow. I know, you I do Willow's too. You think a bad movie? It didn't do very well, is what I'm saying. It didn't? It didn't. Oh. Yeah. Really? It was, it was, it was one of those things, you know, now we got to pull up the numbers. That shocks me. Yeah, that but Willow, me. as a George Lucas movie, it was not Star Wars, and therefore it failed. It wasn't Star Wars or Indiana Jones. Yeah. So uh, so Willow was seen as a disappointment when it was originally released back in the late 80s uh, on a $35 million budget. Its worldwide gross was $57 million. Are you serious? I am. Oh, I am. wow. But I remember I Willow. I thought it did so much better. I remember well, enjoying it. That's just it, right? We did enjoy it. We absolutely did. I remember the trailer for that being uh, being one where it was very unclear. It was like clouds that formed the faces of the characters. And they were just like, from the mind of George Lucas. Yeah. Magic. And mystery. directed by Ron Howard, right? Yeah. 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 And, and really? uh, uh, who did the music? Um, uh, the same guy who did... Uh, Titanic. James Horner? That's it. Yes, James Horner did the music. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And so, so um I mean, it's this everything all-star was right. cast and everything. Everything yeah. was right about the movie. Val Kilmer in his prime. In his right? prime. And that's where he met his wife, Joanne Wally, who uh... was who was the, the main character. Anyway. The point is the Willow. Legacy sequel series. Gentlemen, meet Lug. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not a woman. <laughs> Come on, that's a great movie. Oh, people well, suck. Come on. It, they have a great sequel on Disney Plus, and okay. I am so hyped about it. I watched it as I put it on, expecting it to be something I was just going to have in the background while I worked on the Screamer Hulk. Uh huh. And instead. I blew two hours. I, I've had it on my computer. I wasn't watching it on the TV. I had it on my computer because I expected it to just be like... Yeah, background noise. And instead, I went... <laughs> for two hours straight. It is It is such... Awesome. A, I'm not going to say it's the same. Like, Andor, I enjoyed on a cerebral level. Willow, <laughs> I'm enjoying on just like a... Oh, the, how f- it's just so much fun. It's so, and it captures the spirit of the original movie so well. And huh. it, it's just one of those legacy sequels where you don't... I'll speak for myself. I felt like this could... This does feel like a natural progression of the story. As okay. opposed to, we're mining your nostalgia for all that it's worth. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, because you get, you know, like, you could tell the difference. Sometimes it's just sure. like. <laughs> but there, but this one in particular, you see the children of of uh, of uh, Mad Mardigan and uh, what's her name? I forget her name. I'm going to look it up. Sorsha, who, who is Joanne Wally. And you see 
what Willow has become after after you know saving the kingdom what the kingdom has become twisted and evil now more machine now than man uh no no he's still actually the great thing is he's still willow okay he's still like he's still this dude who does magic and still doesn't get any respect from the daikinis (laughs) um but they've added some neat uh neat side things and you know a lot of things can be about theming um, instead of this just being a retread of the themes of the original movie, this talks about, th- there is a, there's an underlying theme of ignoring your problems doesn't make them go away. In fact, they can get worse. Yeah. And it really, it really <laughs> makes that point come home. It doesn't hit you over the head with it. It's, it's layered in nicely in how the story is told, wow. but like. It punches you in the face with like, oh shit, things got bad. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, it's just I. Uh, as of time of recording, I have seen two episodes. The third episode played last night, and uh, and I'm gonna catch up with that later. But um, is it uh, a ten episode series? Like, is Andor? Is that ten? I don't. I don't know. That was twelve. Oh wow! Okay. Um, I right. think I think this. I don't. I actually don't know. But you know what? I happen to be on the Internet Movie Database Pro. And are they roughly hour long episodes, or yeah. what's the deal there? Yeah, okay. they are. They are in the they are in the hour long category. Wow, uh, that's great. See, Is Ron episodes? Howard involved? Is he like executive producer or anything, or Lucas, or who's who's who owns this? Let me check on that. Uh, there are eight episodes. Um, the developer and writer is jo- Jonathan Kasdan. Mm. Uh, George Lucas is credited as a writer, uh, and based on characters by, mm. um, and then producer wise, uh, a lot of people that you would know from, uh, if, from seeing other Lucasfilm stuff, their regular producer team is on that. Ron Howard is credited as an executive producer. Okay. Uh, but so is Kathleen Kennedy. Um, mm-hmm. So that means that, you know, they're doing kind of high level stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, and then they reuse James Horner's themes throughout. Ah, so. Okay. So, yeah. So it's 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 a solid. If you enjoyed Willow, I think that you will really enjoy this nice little legacy series. Okay. Uh, as a heads up. Because anybody who's, I know my first question was, are they going to bring back Mad Marty again? Because oh. they're bringing back everybody they could from the original film. Uh-huh. There is confirmation that Val Kilmer will not be in season one. But they left it purposely vague like that. Like he could return in season two. And I know that he's got health issues right now. Yeah. Um, um, I'm going to go ahead and hope for you know, hope against hope that, uh, uh, all cures and everything come along from everything. And, and, uh, then he's magically able to, to, uh, get back to, to being healthy and happy. But, um, uh, but yeah, but his character, the character Mad Mardigan is still central to the story, even though he is not able to be present. Yeah. He is, he is at least referenced. He is still a part of the world. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. So yeah. So that's what I'm I, hyped okay. about. I, uh, I, 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 uh, yeah. I, I, I'm on board. I'm in. Yeah, I'm it's in. pretty. Neat. I, I think that's one that I can probably watch myself. I don't think my wife is cares one lick about Willow. So <laughs> I, I think I can. I think I can probably uh, watch that on my own and, and catch up with you. I checked with Renee on that one too because we just watched a Christmas Story Christmas on HBO <gasps> oh, Max. Uh huh. And. You know, I enjoyed Speaking it. Speaking of legacy sequels, I enjoyed it. I did. It's um, you know, it's based on one of the other books in that series, um, in God We Trust, All Others Pay Cash. Right. And so it has the exact same feeling. You know, again, they brought Bast all, all back all the willing cast members that were able to come back. Yeah. Um. Sadly, both of the parents have passed away. So. Uh, I don't. I don't think mom has. She just actors. retired in two thousand seven. I thought she's Linda not Dylan 
passed away recently. Mm, I know straight. Darren McGavin did, but I thought Melinda Dillon had passed away recently. Am I wrong? Am I terribly, terribly wrong? She lives. She lives? She lives. Oh. Uh, she she retired from acting in 2007 and was not able to reprise her role as hmm. as mom in A Christmas Story to. Christmas. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Interesting. But it it is it is good. It is it is one hundred percent a uh, a dose of Christmas nostalgia, mm -hmm. but it does play really well with the original Christmas story. Like you can do the two back to back, as opposed to doing twenty four hours like they used to do of a Christmas story. <laughs> you can yeah. just do like five hours of the two movies back to back and be okay. good. Okay. All yeah. right. All right. Do, do, yeah. do you do you squeeze a summer story in there? A summer story. That was the original first sequel to A Christmas Story that came out after. I that. have never heard of that. Called a Summer Story. Oh, is that going to be um, the thing that I'm hyped about next week? I don't think so. Don't think is it so. bad? I, I, is it I don't know. I've never seen it. I've never heard a positive word about it. Came out in 1988. I've never heard anyone say anything good about it. I don't even think any of the original cast are in it. It's, uh, it, there, it is not. No, it's all new people. Yeah. Oh wait. <laughs> this is the wrong movie. Oh. <laughs> you looking up I was summer like, school? Why are they in period dress? Um, oh, I'll look that up later. <laughs> that. <laughs> uh, so what are you hyped about this week? Anyhow, Dan? what am I hyped about? I I feel weird about what I'm hyped about this week because it's more of a it's more of a personal progress thing. You're allowed to be hyped then, about whatever you want to be hyped about. Then, then a thing that other people could go check out on the plus, as as you've stated. But every year, I say, are you on Goodreads? I am. You are okay. So, so then you know that every year you can set a reading goal for yourself, mm. and that Goodreads will track that along with the books that you've read. Uh, I started this back in 2012, and I had a very modest goal of seven books. Hmm, I, that's not I, bad. I surpassed that. I read nine that year. And then in 2014 to 2017, I upped the goal to 12. I figure a book a month is doable. And I met or surpassed that goal every year. The first year of COVID, I read 31 books, surpassing oh, wow. my goal of 20. I had upped it thinking I've got time because I had just left my corporate job. So I've... I've got, I've got a little extra time while I transition, so I'll up the goal to 20. I, got, I hit 31 that year because <laughs> COVID shut the planet down. <laughs> this year, I upped the goal to 26. Oh, wow. Uh, that's a okay. book every two weeks. Yeah. Totally doable, especially since I hit 31 in, in 2020. But we started the YouTube channel at... The beginning of the year. So, mm -hmm. so much of my time and effort have been pushing the YouTube channel, making content, mm -hmm. editing. And you are the main driver for this channel. Uh, learning DaVinci Resolve and trying to figure out how to do cool things with it so it's not just play video. I'm, right, right, know, right. I'm trying to experiment with it and really, really boost my understanding of the software so that I can do other things with it and possibly turn that into a career. Right. And so as of, well, I finished a book last night, deep work while I was painting. So I actually finished that one. Nice. So that was 20 book 20 of my goal of 26. Now I have not failed my reading goal in 10 years. 2013 was the first year and I missed it by like two books. Mm -hmm. I've met or surpassed my goal every year. So I am, I am fired up to not fail this goal. I'm going to finish another book today. I've got one chapter left. Mm -hmm. So that'll be book 21. And then I'll have three and a half weeks to read five books. I've got another book that I'm reading that is, it's really slow. I, it's it's more of a it's more of a it's a 
it's a podcast adjacent book. It's about fairy tales. It's a, okay. a, an in-depth look at fairy tales. Right. It's homework. So that's 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 hero's journey research. Right. And it's pretty dry. And the the author says that every fairy tale is about sex with kids. So it's oh, it's, oh. it's weird. Oh. In that respect. <laughs> Hashtag don't have sex with kids. Good uh, grief. Ugh. And then the, yeah, it's, 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 that's it's the seventies, man. There's free, oh free God. love. <laughs> Anyhow. Uh, but I'm also reading the gray Knights by Ben oh. counter, which is the first of the gray Knights omnibus. So that is also helping me stay motivated. If we want to go back to our uh, previous discussion of how you stay motivated to to do hobby time is reading that book helps me like ooh now I, okay that was a cool chapter now I want to paint paint a guy so uh, I feel like those read fast too a lot of black library it. books I think I can do it I think you can too three and a half weeks five books I, I can do it but then there's also like okay well I also got to paint still yeah and there's like other things I gotta keep making content for the channel but what I have done is a few weeks ago, I deleted Twitter from my phone because ah. I found myself, I would get up in the morning, stumble up there, turn on my computer. And while I would drink my coffee, I would just like scroll through Twitter and I hate Twitter. I don't get anything out of it. I don't enjoy it. There's nothing there for me. It's just like doom scrolling. Right. And I thought I and before I know it like 2 hours have gone by. I'm like I could have done so much in those 2 hours. So I deleted Twitter from my phone. Do not use Twitter anymore. And I think that's going to help. Because while I drink my coffee now, I can read a book. Right? And right. Get a bunch of reading done. So I yeah. think I can do it. I can do it. Can we do got it. faith in you. Uh, in in the in That's the uh, about. it's a personal thing it's a personal goal but in in the in the comments make sure you, you uh, f in the chat to support Dan on his uh, on his goal here and uh, we'll get we'll get that we'll get you going we'll boost you yeah we'll boost you yeah hype me hype hype it up hype me up be be the flavor flave to uh, to Dan here <laughs> as he's doing this thing <laughs> yeah boy read those books. Uh... Well, that's cool, man. Yeah. And if they want to, uh, are you open to friends on Goodreads so they can see what you're reading? I think so. <laughs> what do you mean? Am I open? Are Are you personally open to our audience friending you on on Goodreads? Oh, yeah. I yeah. I've, it's a public profile. I don't have anything. I don't have it locked. And to, you will to, be able to find the link to that profile down in the description. <laughs> yeah. What is my, what is my, is it, is, what's my name? I don't even know what my, I don't even know what my name is. Oh, it's Book Thump. Which yeah. makes sense yeah, because that is your, thump. that is your social media handle for it just is, about everything. It is. It used yeah. to be my, it used to be my blog too. My, my book review blog, which has sat derelict for a couple of years now. Well, you're too busy reading the books to be able to write about the books. Yeah, who's got time? Who's, who's got, got time the time? To, who's got time to write books? Who's got the time? Write about books, even. Somebody somebody is painting and playing games. That's right. That's happening. That's right. You could do that all here on the old uh, No Games for Old Men YouTube channel. So if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe. By the way, we see you. We see you. So many of you mm -hmm. who are watching who aren't subscribed yet. It really does help the channel out, and uh, uh, we are we are slowly growing uh, the subscriber count to a point where where we'll be able to join the partner program here at YouTube. Uh, thanks to y'all, our view times are skyrocketing, and so yeah. you know we are we we really just need the numbers on on subscribers to be able to kick over on that uh, kick over on that that thing there and start. Start just just squeezing blood out of this stone that they call YouTube. <laughs> well, I think we've got some work to do. Yeah. Folks, don't forget to uh, toss your time. Don't forget to toss your managing time. Ah, don't forget to put in the chat. I'm putting all these in there. <laughs> don't forget to put how you manage your hobby time, time management down in the comments so that we can get some ideas 
as opposed yeah. to coming up with hard things to say when we talk about <laughs> managing hobby time time management. <laughs> we'll see y'all next week. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.